The American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, has filed a lawsuit in Montana State Court challenging the censure of Zoe Zephyr, a Democrat from Missoula and Montana's first trans legislator. The lawsuit accuses the GOP-led House of Representatives of silencing Zephyr and denying her of her First Amendment rights and infringing upon the Democratic representation of her constituents. By depriving Representative Zephyr of her right to freely engage with the legislative process, defendants have also deprived her 11,000 constituents of the right to full representation in their government, the lawsuit states. Defendants' lawless silencing and censure of Representative Zoe Zephyr extinguishes a vital part of the job her constituents elected her to do. The suit lists the state of Montana, Representative Matt Rieger, Speaker of the Montana House, and Bradley Murphid, Sergeant at Arms of the Montana House, as defendants. A spokesman for Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen called the case political activism masquerading as a lawsuit. The ACLU is trying to use the courts to interfere with the legislature as it carries out its constitutional duties on behalf of Montanans, Emily Flower, Newton's press secretary, said in an email. Any relief granted by the court would be a gross violation of the separation of powers. Zephyr was officially censored on April 27th, but has been banned from speaking during House debates since April 20th. This came after Zephyr voiced vocal opposition against anti-trans laws, including the banning of gender-affirming care, a measure which passed the GOP-led House and was signed into law on April 28th by Republican Governor Greg Giaforte, despite the fact that Giaforte's child is non-binary. On April 18th, Zephyr debated the bill stating that the legislators who voted for this draconian law would have blood on their hands, referring to the increase in trans youth suicide rates based on scientific and peer-reviewed studies. The Montana Fascist Caucus then called for a censure of Zephyr because they felt threatened by her. This led to protests, which the far right has ironically called an insurrection. After Zephyr's censure, further protests and support, show of support for the legislator has been outpouring, with the phrase, let her speak, gaining traction on social media. Zephyr represents Montana's 100th state district, where she was elected by a landslide in November 2022, in a constituency of 11,000 residents. She will be banned from the House floor until the end of the 2023 session, which ends May 5th, only being allowed to vote remotely. Now, what I find fascinating about this whole article, about this whole situation that's going on in Montana, is that the Republicans in Montana have had the audacity to call a peaceful protest and someone pointing out the facts, let's start with that, pointing out the facts of a scientific, mind you, and peer-reviewed study that states that gender-affirming care helps with a lot of different things and it can prevent a lot of different, you know, mental, you know, health issues from developing and that, you know, it will, you know, reduce the risk, you know, and actions of trans youth suicide by great rates. But the banning of gender-affirming care will lead to 40% of trans youth committing suicide. But, because that's the whole goal of the GOP in America, is to genocide trans people, they don't care. They want that. Think about that. They're, they want to talk about protecting the children while essentially leading to the death of children. Oh, and then let's not, of course, get into the whole thing about their, you know, absolute uh, boner for, you know, the NRA, which itself is a fascist gun organization. 
And not that guns are necessarily are a bad thing, because they're not. They are should be used for the defense of the proletariat. But I digress. The point is, is that they're perfectly okay with dead children in schools. They're perfectly okay, okay with, you know, with the bodies of trans people piling up. But, you know, so long as we make sure the, the women are pumping out those kids, right? Kind of just seems like it's like, you know, just trying to make sure people have more kids so you can throw about half of them into the meat grinder. Whether it's for, you know, through those particular means or sending them off to fight in imperialist wars for, you know, stupid resources for profit. My point being is that they felt threatened by someone pointing out these facts. And their supporters, and I know this because I've seen it plenty on Twitter and TikTok, which is which both are just a cesspit, you know, of freaking horrendous people, um, who who have supported th that move. They supported the censure because, you know, they they feel that somehow someone's speaking up, speaking based on scientific evidence is somehow a threat to them. I guess that makes sense, considering the fact that, you know, the fascist right are, you know, known for denying science and and making up their own facts that they literally are based on zero study and pulled straight from their asses. Um, but they they are they felt threatened by by her statement because she she stands against what they consider the gender norm you know which is based along complete cis supremacist ideology which itself is based in white supremacy ideology but then when she uh when her supporters staged a peaceful protest that is somehow an insurrection. But January 6th wasn't. You know, it, it's funny how the fascists will twist things and like to completely just, like, it, it's like it's opposite day every single day in their, their circles. Where, you know, it's basically an insurrection to stage a peaceful opposition protest to a draconian law that you passed, that's somehow an insurrection. But you committing an, a coup d'etat on January 6th, 2021, because you were trying to, you know, make sure that Donald Trump stayed in power... That's not a fucking insurrection. It's completely reactionary, and it was violent, to say the least. But that's somehow not an insurrection. An insurrection would, on the other hand, also mean a revolution for, you know, say, if socialists decided to uproot, you know, the Montana state or Oregon state or feder U.S. federal government and install a socialist dictatorship of the proletariat, that would also technically be considered an insurrection. Granted, that's what should happen. But the point is, <laughs> is that th those would be, you know, would fall into the same category. But a peaceful liberal protest to against, in opposition against this draconian law that essentially, you know, is going to lead to trans people, to, to kids killing themselves. That's not an insur- that, that, that's, that's an insurrection for some reason? It really comes to, you know, it, it's, it really just makes me think about 1984, about War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. 
Well, we definitely have the war is peace thing, considering that America has been at war for about um, 200 and, what, 200 and like 30 some odd years, almost 240 some odd years of its like 250 year existence. It's almost continuously waged war, whether it was against Native Americans, whether it was against the British. Granted, it, that was largely in defense because of, you know, fights over maritime jurisdiction and the fact that also the British didn't really recognize America's sovereignty that much back then. Um, whether it was war against the Spanish, whether it was go World War One, World War Two, the imperialist conflict that it involved itself in uh, with Korea and Vietnam, and by imperialist conflict I mean trying to keep the imperialists in power. Um, you know, the war in Afghanistan, um, the first Gulf War, the Iraq War. America, the Civil War, fuck. We fought a war, we got so, so, you know, so bored, I guess, during the 1860s, we fought a war against ourselves, and we're getting damn close to fighting one against our own self because, well, frankly... We've been away from combat too long, I guess. To only two fucking years. Um, but the point... Doubling back, though, on all this... They, they've, it's funny how they find that a peaceful protest is an insurrection, but an actual coup d'etat isn't. That, you know, that we're going to war to keep us safe. Because war is peace. They tell us freedom is slavery in the same aspect that they say, you know, uh, and, and basically which they keep us, you know, essentially chained, working for, you know, pittance of a wage, paying your agricultural workers uh, who largely come from, you know, third world countries, you know, cr you know like, what, a dollar or two an hour? or a dollar to a day, something like that. And, you know, that, and that's not, that's not slavery, the complete exploitation of labor, whether it's the agricultural workers or, you know, your own, like, lumpen proletariat or your own, you know, actual, like, working, working class people being paid, you know, only 15, 18, twenty dollars an hour you know which for a lot of people in certain in a lot of states isn't even enough to get to get by it barely pays the rent much less bills and food and gas and all that crap that's that that's you know in a way it's what we call wage slavery because these people can't live on their own and so then they try to apply for assistance, whether that be food stamps, etc. But, you know, then they get denied because they make too much, which is just a way of trying to keep them, you know, impoverished and enslaved, essentially, to, to the system. So, but then they call that, you know, capitalism freedom. So, yeah, war is peace freedom is slavery, and now we've reached the point of ignorance is strength, the denying of scientific facts. We've been saying that for the last couple of years, but ignorance is strength, because in their mind, we stand a better chance of standing as a unified country, a very prideful and nationalistic country, because, you know, and we're going to do that based on lies, deceit, manipulation, gaslighting, abuse, civil rights violations, in fact, fuck civil rights entirely, and, uh, you know, denying of scientific facts, even if, they, you know, when it literally challenges everything about your narrative. But don't worry, folks. Ignorance is strength. Freedom is slavery. War is peace. A peaceful protest is an insurrection. I'm, I'm doing this in, in lieu of, of a gesture I would not be able to make on YouTube. 
Um, because you see where I'm getting at here. This is exactly the fascist playbook that they are going by. And, you know, we're seeing the brunt of this being picked up by the Republicans in Montana, and it's going to spread across the country. It's going to infiltrate the highest levels of the federal government. Montana is a petri dish, an experiment of what is going to happen on a larger scale, not just within the U.S. government, but potentially in a lot of other Western imperialist governments where capitalism is fading and dying. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Until next time.